Well, hey friends, welcome back to the cabin. I just got back from the hardware store. The piece of pipe that the six foot and the two foot that I put together here was an inch too short uh, because of where I had to put my hole. As well, I had to go down just a little bit farther, so I'll have to fill this one back up. I went and got this piece, so I'm going to get it taped on both ends and we'll see if we can get this hooked up because I need to take the tractor and dig a line over to the carport because I think that my help will be here tomorrow to uh, help me install the underground pipe. this end I need to put a T to grab this other pipe right here. I think that ought to do it. got that T put on so now we need to run over to where our riser is going to come out of the ground and I want to kind of keep it away from the corner of the footing there because I've actually got a uh, piece of pipe laying down there for a drain that whenever I can get a septic run in here I'll actually dig that up and be able to plumb in under the house. All right. That'll do it right there. Now I need to turn just a hair a bit more. Right like that. about that.
Well, so my question is, is the tractor strong or are these parts just cheap? Um, this is not really heavy and it looks to me like this is probably tool steel. So it should be made out of something else, I think. Anyway, check that out. So I'm going to have to get another one before I can uh, use any more equipment on the back. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Anyway, I got that kind of dug out, which will make it a lot easier to pull out with the shovel. He told me I didn't only need it to go about 12 inches. So, anyway, we'll get a shovel and we'll start clearing that out. here and just put a little dirt just enough to hold it.
that, buddy. Well, folks, we finally got that ditch uh, dug in there. This is my good friend Mike. I've known him pretty much most of my life. We went to school together, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. He works for the gas company. How long have you been there? Uh, 33 years. 33 years. So hopefully he knows what he's doing, right? <laughs> now, um, he actually helped me hook up the other cabin that I built about 25 years ago. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, um, we got a... We also put a wire in there where I can locate it, but I honestly, I'll know where it's at. But uh, he's fixing, well now, what are you fixing to do here? It's called butt fusion. It's, all it is is you heat the pipe and fuse it together. We got a machine we set it in, we trim it, make it uniform, and then we heat to 500 degrees, set it in there, meld it, and put it together. Okay. And it should be like a steel weld. The pipe should break before the weld does. Gotcha. So we're going to use our new Predator generator here because he's got to have power for his piece of equipment. So we're going to get the, now, what is it that you do? You said you work underground mainly, stuff like this? Yeah. I got you. I got you. All right, folks, what we are going to do then, and this is actually a bunch of scrap that you accumulated that you're putting together, right? Yeah. He's trying to keep my costs down. <laughs> yeah, you can see the fuses I've made. Yeah, yeah, I actually see them. All right, well, let's get this thing fired up then and see what we can do. You ready for me to start this? Yeah. Yeah, it's taking me to heat up.
with the Valkyrie. I think so. Well, so the part that I didn't film was uh, crawling up under the cabin about a dozen times and running the pipe up under there. And the reason that I ran this on the outside, number one, is I've got uh, the gas range I had previously installed. And number two is, since I don't have the ability to cut and thread the pipe, it would have been very difficult because I've got a low hanging center where I've got all of my electric wires running from one end to the other. And the pipe would have had to really been low. So what I did was is I went to the other side of that beam, came up on the back side of it, and then went down parallel with my um, floor joist. So uh, it's actually up very close to the floor joist right now. And this section right here, we don't really get too cold here in East Tennessee, so I don't think I'm going to have a problem with that half-inch line even serving the gas logs that I get at some point in time in the future. So... I ran a home run close to that area, then I came up through the floor actually with the appliance hose and connected into my appliance. So uh, the other thing that we did do is we put a gauge on here, we pressured it up to about 100 psi and we left it there for about 30 minutes and it held so we went ahead and disconnected it and then I powered it up and everything run absolutely wonderful. So let's go inside and take a look at the, our new propane refrigerator. All right, so here's the fridge all hooked up, and as you can see, I've got a few items in there. And then up top here, I got a few items in there as well. So yeah, the only thing that I had to do really was when I uh, initially fired it up, I let it run for 24 hours before I did anything uh, on wide open, and then I backed it down to the temperature that I actually wanted, and then I started putting food in there and it seems like it's done very well. So yeah, this uh, install didn't seem like it was quite as difficult since I'd had some prior experience <laughs> running some gas pipe. If you want a really good laugh, Jennifer and I were converting this gas stove to LP. Um, so working together, you know, but on our very first job, but we actually did it. So that's the main thing that counts. Click up here in the top right hand corner. I think you'll enjoy that video. Friends, thanks for stopping by. We really do appreciate it. And we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.